Welcome to the Face of Media Studio Lunchtime Talk. These talks are every Friday at 1pm and they are beaming out across the internet, Facebook, Twitter and YouTube simultaneously, but also in the building. Thanks very much for coming in. Um, I am Luke Henry, I'm the Face of Media Studio producer. I'm a white man with a large ginger beard and I'm wearing a black and white t-shirt because in front of a large TV, if that wasn't obvious enough. Um, these talks are our chance to throw open the doors of the studio uh, and for those of you, uh, for us to hear from all from people who are making things within the community or who are doing things that excite us. Um, they cover everything from innovative, innovative research in the fields of creativity and technology to projects in progress which are in need of feedback and questions of curious mind. A uh, quick bit of housekeeping, if you are in the space, keep your mask on when you're moving around. Uh, if you're at home, it's up to you whether or not you use a mask. Um, and when you're sat down, it's up to you whether or not you need to put it on. Um, there is a quiet space just to the left there. If anyone needs it at any point, feel free to get up and move around during the talk. Um, and especially a big welcome to any of you out there watching here or in the building right now who are new to what we do. For those of you, here's a little bit more about us. The studio is a diverse and collaborative community exploring creativity and technology with everything from comedy to coding and product development to performance art. We are a, are a partnership between the Watershed, the University of West of England and the University of Bristol. And we're a home for embryonic ideas, research and development of new things and buildings of new countries. And we're a meeting place of both creative and commercial people. We offer studio space, desk space, meeting rooms, events, and opportunities for all of our residents. We're a space for people to take time and risks in their practice and make time for collaboration. A captioned and recorded version of this talk is available after the talk is finished, a short while after. And there's a QA at the end of this. If you're watching online, pop your questions or thoughts into the chat. If you're in the room, raise your hand and I will come to you. Um, you can get news on all our future talks by heading to watershed.co.uk forward slash studio, by following us on at PM Studio UK on Twitter, or at Pervasive Media Studio on Instagram, or by subscribing to our newsletter, or even this YouTube if you are watching online. Um, today, now I'd like to introduce Ella Mesmer. Um, Ella has been creating a project which uh, combines dance, aerial, storytelling, telling, and tech. And it's hosted in something called Utopia, which is Ella's own on online world which she has created. We're going to move into that world in a minute. Um, her world was built in collaboration with tech visionary Brian Aldea and uh, illustrator Jessica Rosas. And Ella is going to share that world with us while eventually, where she will eventually host new shows, children, a children's book, imposter syndrome courses, and the workshop and workshops. Um, so by the magic of the video and the internet, I'm going to hand over to Ella and we'll just join her in. Do you hear us now? Good. Yes. Hello, everyone. My name is Ella. I am a light-skinned mixed heritage person with my hair, which is curly and brown, shoulder length down today. I am joining you live from my bedroom in Leeds. And I'm also from Bristol, so some of the time I'm in Bristol as well. And it's a joy to be here as a member of PMS with you in my world and I could not have built this world without the wonderful Brian so I'm going to hand over to Brian now. Thank you Brian. Hello um, my name is Brian Aldea. I am a um, light-skinned Asian male with a bit of a top bun and a mustache um, wearing a black polo and uh, I'm coming um, from um, your friends at Topia, uh, the the wonderful interactive um, uh, social uh, video platform that is uh, hosting <laughs> Ella's great performance. I'm currently in the United States in my bedroom here in uh, New Jersey. Welcome. So That's we okay. are going to show you around our world. And to begin, we thought we'd do some world housekeeping. So you, you see, here we are. And I'm just going to demonstrate that we are little avatars that can walk, like so. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to invite the, the crew, so Brian and the PMS studio, to follow me. And I think you are all now following. And Brian, can I hand over to you for some more housekeeping things to know before we go on our journey <clears throat> absolutely um so topia is a wonderful um uh, spatial uh, video chatting platform that allows you to 
kind of break out of the box that um, normal video chatting platforms is and, and inhabit a space that is not only um, wonderfully um, interactive and engaging, but you also have a chance to um, have a realistic conversation with a person or um, in a venue that um, they've created. As you walk, um, you can do that very easily by clicking with your cursor in the direction you want to walk, or you could use your arrow keys to walk there as well. As you get closer to a person, they'll actually get loud and bright. And then as you walk away, they'll drift and um, become fainter and fainter until poof, you've disconnected. So we're bringing the serendipity and organic nature of conversations back into a virtual space where you can have um, really great conversations with people. Um, anything in an event, in a gathering, possibly a small social setting, or even in a large um, engagement such as this one. Awesome, thank you, Brian. Luke, are you ready? Shall we go on an adventure? Yeah. Awesome, um, so I'm gonna begin is... walking. And I love this world. So this is my second world that I've built, Brian. And this world we have called, here's the big reveal, Utopia. <laughs> and this world is really the house for an Arts Council project, which explores topics around imposter syndrome, around privilege, around celebration of identity and heritage. And we have made two kind of versions of the show. One show is for children. And that, that show was really about, we wanted to tell a story, a superhero story, but where the characters were more like the characters that growing up the, the performers would have liked to have seen in their storybooks. And so this character is called Majar. And this character is non-binary and this character is mixed heritage, and this character would love to be a butterfly. And so it was kind of really taking the concepts of the adult work and, and playing with how to put them in a, child, in a child context. So I'm gonna continue our adventure, unless there's anything, Brian, that you want to add at this point? Um, no, I think that was it. But um, yeah, it's great because um, uh, Ella, and collaboration with Ed, Jessica and I um, basically created this wonderful interactive space where you can kind of follow a path or, or go and explore. <laughs> and for the purposes of today, you are following me, but when we, we will be opening this up. So if you did want to attend the first show, that would be on the 10th of December and you will be free. <laughs> but for the purposes of today, we're gonna to take you on a tour together. I'm going to continue the journey now. And you'll notice there's certain sounds that you might hear around the world. Cue sounds, maybe. <laughs> so we're, we're making our way now to a temple space. And there's quite a lot of research that shows that this kind of space can also be relaxing. That can, it can also, like being in, in sounds of nature, being able to see trees, our brains can't necessarily distinguish the, the difference between reality and, and these virtual worlds. So we wanted to really create this space of healing as well. So welcome to our temple, our virtual temple, where you can choose to click on this meditation. And just over here, you will find the course, which is all about imposter syndrome and kind of the various things that we talked about during the creation of the work coming soon, coming by the 10th of December. I'm gonna take you through the temple now. And out we pop. And so this is a space for one of the artists, 
you will hear the sounds of Marv Radio. This is his sound healing field. Marv Radio is a London-based and Ibiza-based beatboxer and sound healer. And for the for the shows, when we start to do shows in this world, Marv will actually be here live rather than hearing his music. He will be giving a sound healing experience to, to all the participants. But I'm gonna bring you up towards our show. So this is the house of the actual show. And depending on what show you are watching, you will have either the children's show here or the adult show. This is just rehearsal footage. So this isn't the real version. However, we did live stream this rehearsal and it was audio described. So there, there is that to watch if you wanted to on the internet. I'll just walk inside so you can see a bit closer. And this show combines aerial silks with movement, which is very, I have a background in breaking, as well as many dancers of the diaspora, including Afro-Cuban and Afro-Brazilian. And this is a very kind of contortion-y early section, again, in collaboration with Marv Radio, shown here. And we do, we kind of move the first section, we are just on this silks, like so. And the next section, we actually wrap up in the whole silks and kind of traverse the whole stage. The next section, we climb the silks. And then the finale, we, we dance around the, the whole stage, but with the silks attached to us. And the adults version is pretty much like this, but we actually work with some projections onto the silks as well. The children's version, we've been working with an incredible costume designer who you will see a little bit more of later. And she's actually kind of dyed and painted on the silk. So they are this wonderful, you know, story in themselves. And there's also a maypole on stage, which we've replaced the ribbons with beautiful fabrics. And children are invited to sit on stage with us to watch the show. And then they will also dance the maypole, winding it up and unwinding it during the show. So I'm going to come back out of this performance space now and ask if I've missed anything that you want to say, Brian. Um, no, I think it, I think you've been done so far so good um, in describing it. Um, it's a very wonderful uh, communal experience to kind of watch not only the performance with others, but actually kind of be around people who are experiencing the same thing as you, kind of seeing um, their emotions, seeing kind of their reactions, and, and possibly even uh, walking away to briefly have a bit of a chat on kind of what they experienced. That's lovely. <laughs> Awesome. So I'm going to continue the tour. And you, you notice, you might notice I just did a few, I just thought we haven't shown you that you can also react as your avatar. You can throw out love as your avatar. So moving down. And the, the piece is very much themed on this concept of binaries. And we looked a lot at a wonderful Orisha so Orishas are Yoruban gods or deities and Oya or Yansa can shapeshift between being a butterfly and being a buffalo. And so you will notice that these two themes show up often. So over here we have a play field and I was gonna invite that we maybe had a little game, which would mean not following each other for a while. So the idea here, and again, something that was so wonderful when I first met Brian and discovered this world was just how much it encourages play. And as a human, I'm, I'm really interested in three things. One is 
one is play, one is rest, and the other one is movement. And so this world just, you know, the, the fact that this can really encourage the imagination, I found super exciting. And um, so in this play field, one thing that I would love to demonstrate quickly is that we can have a game of chase. Great. So if, <laughs> if I'm on it, <laughs> then let's see what happens. Let's see if Luke's able to join in with us. You're only allowed to stay in the play field though, just saying. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Are you ready? Ready. Oh, and you're out. To get up. Get set. Go. Oh my God. I think I got Nick. <laughs> I think I got Brian. <laughs> this is this is one of my favorite games in Tokyo. I think I won, right? <laughs> so I'm gonna invite you both to follow me again. <laughs> Thanks everyone. I think in theory we should have swapped that right and I should have tried to run away. From you. <laughs> anyway. But here actually in this space are some of the the illustrations by Jessica Rosas. So Jessica is a wonderful artist. She's of Brazilian heritage and knows a lot about the Orishas as well. So it's been a wonderful collaboration. And there is more artwork coming soon. I'm going to bring you all backstage. Oh. I'll just invite you again. There we go. So this is the backstage area. And am I right, Brian? Do we click? Oh, yeah. Yes. And um, so, so actually, Luke, you will need to click as well for these to show where you are. If you click on the sign that says backstage, then you will see a little sample of the work that Zeffi has been doing for us, the costume designer. And this is a time lapse. You can also hear some wonderful sounds of nature in this area. Yeah, it's our it's our butterfly conservatory area. It's pretty amazing, right? So we will meet these silks on Monday yeah. in Newcastle at Dan City. Okay. And then over here, yes, we have the butterfly houses. These are also still in construction in terms of the sounds that you will hear but I'm fascinated by the journey, the life cycle of the butterfly. Actually, I'll demonstrate I'm down here. This was an amazing creation by Brian. Oh, look, you get a little video. Here is the butterfly life cycle. And you can actually expand it um, if you press the button on the right side of the uh, video, the very corner, uh, you'll be able to expand it so you can see it larger. So pretty. And so this was really the inspiration for the piece. But I loved the, the kind of the symbol of hope but also how this, this really feels like the, the human journey of alchemy. And for me, that's what dance, rest and play are all about is, is this kind of opportunity for transformation. So I think I would like to show the Oshun space and then maybe the party, and then we'll open up for questions. So it's a pretty big world. We're gonna follow this river now. I'm just gonna make sure that we are all following, yeah. It's 
So you're about to hear the sound by one of the other artists involved, which is Sabio, Sabio Janiak. This is an illustration by the wonderful Jessica. And this music, this the composer actually played in his bathtub. It was very inspired by this concept of the river. I'm finally going to just take you on one last adventure. Up, up, up. Like the butterfly, we're just going to fly a little bit high. Oh. <laughs> Through the forest. <laughs> go for a journey into the sky. <laughs> We're going to keep going, yep. Yeah. Because the other thing that we wanted to include was this, this imagination that this butterfly can also fly all the way out to space. This was for the children's world. And so we created a little party. And um, this will have music eventually. But this will be the finale in outer <laughs> space. <laughs> you can have your... And we can also can dance little... in space too. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> so I think this is probably a good point to um, open up for some questions hmm. and bring Luke back in. Uh, and uh, it's great that we get to finish the party location. Um, has anybody got any <laughs> questions? Uh, well, what happens next uh, with the world? What happens next? So on the 10th of December, so we're, we're about to fill now the, the final kind of two sh theatre shows um, and they will be edited and ready to go into the world for the first sharing on the 10th of December. That will be more like a, a kind of a, an R&D sharing. So we'll have like a question and answer area and, you know, we'll really be about figuring out what works in the world. And then the plan is to launch our first show in January. I think it's possibly January the 10th. Is the first show. And who who is the world for? The world is for humans, <laughs> butterflies. <laughs> um, no, the world the world is really for for anyone who would like to come and experience the theatre show. You know, maybe it's from their bedroom, maybe it's with a group of friends, maybe it's just one individual. But the, it's really this idea of bringing the theatre to you know, the theatrical world to your house or to whatever space you would like to access it from. Any questions? Oh, great. Uh, one, two, three. Is the show going to go from all alive as well? Yes, yes, it is. Yes. So, um, you know, this is this has very much been a, a beautiful journey of like meeting Brian and so on and, and kind of really rethinking for me how how and where I put on a show. Um, so we did do one, we had 111 people come to our R&D with the other performance, and then this will kind of go into a development of what does it look like to, to have theatre, you know, we, we would love to do like a monthly show in our world, in our two current worlds, and possibly be building a third. But the idea is that that will also, will we'll still continue to tour, you know, when the, when the world allows us to, we'll also have shows in theatres and so on and that this is another kind of way of accessing what we do. Um, is, is there a limit to the number of people who can be in the world at once? And yeah. Yeah, how is that experience for someone participating? Like how many, is there a limit to how many people pop up at the top or? Great, Great. Brian, Brian, would you like to that? Oh, sure. So, so essentially, the the world itself can have um, uh, basically any any number of people in it. But um, when you do connect with someone, so uh, you connect with someone 
spatially, um, uh, you'll connect to up to nine others, so making groups of 10. Um, the reason being is we want um, people to enjoy that wonderful kind of connection or conversation with one another. So um, you'd be able to kind of see and hear them clearly. But the great thing about um, um, this wonderful platform is as you walk around, you'll, you'll, you kind of make um, your own Venn diagrams of who you are connecting to and who you can um, um, talk to. Now, um, for performances, um, there's an ability to to put a person on broadcaster, so their their audio and video is heard by a large number of people or the entire space. So, um, in the last show that we did, um, uh, we were able to do a performance where kind of a siren was singing a siren song and kind of bringing us to the depths and the, everybody was kind of following in tow because everybody could see them. But it's great because um, uh, on this platform, um, you're able to have these really great um, intimate, like serendipitous um, relationships with your neighbor, uh, but while also kind of being a part of a greater um, uh, production um, all at the same time. Yes, Thank and just you. a big up to that siren was Beth Rowley, actually, from Bristol. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, I just wanted to say it's so fun. It just reminds me of being at festivals and wandering around and <laughs> finding lots of different tents. Um, yeah, yeah, my, thank you. <laughs> um, and my question was, um, how did you work together to bring your ideas to life? And did you come up against anything you couldn't kind of make a reality that you wanted? Pretty much no. I feel like Brian is like a superhero, and <laughs> I, I, I basically asked her, like, bring out every idea you could possibly think of, <laughs> and I'll try to see what we can do about it. But it, it's definitely kind of a, a really wonderful, like, artistic and creative partnership. Um, you know, we would um, start. Kind of thinking of like different ways we could um, engage an audience like based on a storyline that Ella created and then it would kind of morph to be like oh well what if we did this and what if you know we were able to have a person experience kind of um, this in this way and um, uh, it, it was it was really great to, to kind of um, collaborate because I think everybody kind of put um, the same amount of effort in and I think we were um, I guess creatively like finishing others each other's sentences like what about this and we would always expand on each other's ideas so I think it was really great but I, I think it was definitely um, a really great like um, creative um, uh, like melding of, of like amazing ideas from from all sides from ella to jessica to myself but yeah <laughs> i would say um i was very very inspired by um some of the things that she was thinking of and kind of just tried to cross the uh t's and dot the i's <laughs> as best mm -hmm. i could <laughs> and I, i'd just like to add like yeah, i think everyone like you probably for yourselves there's something about being in this world that is just so playful that you know it's like the creative juices just kind of like they sparked and and we we actually brought in like some of the other performers and so on and it seemed like every time a new person came into the world they were like what about this and what about <laughs> like oh we may be able to do it <laughs> yeah so it's been really beautiful to just see like you know the crystals for example that was jay Jay Lance, who's one of the performers for this show. And it's just really lovely to be able to go, yeah, we'll, you know, we'll have like a, a little piece of everybody in this, in this space. Yeah, and yeah, thank you, Brian, as well, for, for bearing with me. Oh, it, it <laughs> and wonderful. allowing it all to come You're true. like, oh, well, what if the butterflies were actually flying in, <laughs> in the greenhouses? And I was like, oh, that's never been done before. Let's see, <laughs> see what that looks like. <laughs> I wonder if either of you have any advice for someone who might be trying, who might be thinking about creating an online world themselves and hitting the kind of stumbling blocks of, I don't know enough about this, um, or I don't want to be Facebook. Like, what, what, would, what would your tips be? Um, I, I'd say um, just think, think outside of the box, but also um, play have that childlike wonderment 
um, because kind of as adults, we allow society to um, stop ourselves from like making mistakes or making kind of uh, certain creative choices. Um, like on, on a platform like this, it's basically a blank canvas. Um, you could use imagery um, that, that's part of the platform or you can kind of upload your own, but it's, it's basically that blank canvas of if you uh, had the keys to the art department and you could use everything in your repertoire, what do you make? So I'd say take risks, but also, you know, think about how you were a kid once and how, um, how like that, that awesome awestruck feeling you had whenever you kind of discovered something. That's, that's what I normally do when I'm kind of creating a venue because the great thing about the a virtual space is um, it could essentially be limitless. <laughs> um, you, you can um, create with just a bountiful amount of tools and things like that. And I've seen people make um, things kind of uh, a world or a venue with just like uh, uh, tables and chairs and just awesome conversations and awesome prompts. Um, so yeah, I would say just allow yourself to dream and be creative. And I'd say it's always a work in progress. I, every time I like talk to Ella, I was like, oh, discover something new that I wanna <laughs> add or something that I wanna kind of like retweak. So it's always a, a process, but it's always fun. <laughs> And I would add, like, the way we worked on this was we just used a mural board and we just, like, mm -hmm. you know, kind of brain dumped all our ideas. And then that kept on being added to for quite a long time before we started the build, um, which really connects into what Brian said about wonderment of just, just allowing yourself to imagine. And then the other thing I think, well, the thing that's really worked for me is this team, you know, that I had these ideas, but when when these connections were made and this started to happen, actually, it was so great to have other people who got what was going on inside my head and were also able to think outside of that box. So yeah, build your team. And I would say, go for it. It's, you know, it's so nice holding events in this space compared to Zoom, for example, or Facebook that, um, yeah, try it, you might like it. And the, I think the difference in space is that it's really tangible by comparison. Mm -hmm. I have felt a lot calmer watching this than most video calls that I've been in the last two years. <laughs> um, <laughs> so there's one from Mark. Um, Mark saying, which other virtual worlds hosting live content have inspired you along the way with the project? And what would you say is your major difference? Mm, great question. I would say two, for me, it's two of the worlds that you've built, Brian. I have forgotten the name of the, the other theater show. Can you support me? Oh, is it, is it? The one that um, you were in as an actor. Oh, it was, um, it was called Thicket. It Thicket, was a, yeah. um, a uh, New York City and Philadelphia based um, uh, uh, performance theater. And, and they do like these experiential, um, theater productions, and they did, um, they basically pivoted to Zoom, but then pivoted to uh, this platform. And it was, yeah, it was just a wonderful experience having like live actors basically tow you along to be like, follow me, come, come with me to this magical journey. And yeah, it was, it was kind of a very awesome moment to be like, wow, I'm, I'm kind of, really here i have like this tactile feeling that i'm actually with these people and on this journey when we're all just sitting in the comfort of our own living rooms <laughs> in our bedrooms <laughs> yeah that was so inspiring and i i actually went to that show with beth rowley who became the opera octopus the octopus <laughs> yes. the operatic octopus i can't remember her exact name this was in the last show that we did which was a commission for rural arts but um it was just it was just really exciting to kind of see this world and and experience all these different characters and that really helped me to go okay yeah I d I, i'm going to build my world but it's also about the performance experience and and how you interact with each performer in this space and actually i also want to honor the um the pervasive media studio christmas pantomime <laughs> on zoom 
it did actually, you know, that did have a, an impact on this as well of visioning what I wanted. And, you know, so I, I would like to honor that. And, and I'm not sure if we've got the name exactly right of that, Luke. So. No, I don't think it's I think it would seem you're racking my brains as to what exactly you're referring to. But um, it was not ours. It was run by um, some, uh, some, student, some residents who'd already been um, running a pantomime. And I am really struggling for the name of it. That's terrible. You should have told me in advance so I could reference it properly. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was, we'll, we'll, we'll write that in the, um, in the comments. I mean, as part of our, sure, sure. like, as part of every year, normally we have a big Christmas party for the residents of the studio, and obviously, um, lockdowns, COVID, etc. We don't know the exact details, we don't know what that means, but and we couldn't do that. So we, the residents were putting on a very camp, very like, like chaotic food camp, like, um, well, um, it was like the oddest experience. Um, any more questions? Um, Vic says, do visitors have any control over the identity of their characters? Oh, that's a, that's a very good question. So, um, yeah, actually, um, as, as a visitor comes in, they're prompted for kind of a, a given name that they want to be um, called in this space. Um, and then they're also able to choose a color. Um, but aside from that, um, that's the um, amount of personalization. And in an in interesting sense, it kind of brings a sense of oneness, a, a British sense of kind of like, um, uh, like sameness for everyone. But, um, you know, I feel like at the door <laughs> of Topia and, and this platform, you kind of shed the weight and kind of become kind um, uh, an individual, but also um, kind of part of a community of the people who are um, enjoying and partaking in, in a show or in an event uh, on this platform. So it's, it's great. It's, it's kind of like you're bringing that um, sense of humanity back. <laughs> we're, we're all different, but all the same, nonetheless. <laughs> we, we did, we did have, have a lot fun of... on the last show, yeah. Snapchat cameras. <laughs> yeah. Where you can kind of, because the theme, the theme of the show was jellyfish. And so we had a lot of like different jellyfish kind of um, animations within the cameras, which was quite interesting. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. And actually uh, a few people uh, noticed that you could add an emoji <laughs> into your name. So people were um, some wonderful, inspiring emojis <laughs> with their names. <laughs> I think it's probably unlikely in a world that's kind of so kind-hearted and uh, uh, has such a lovely feeling to us. But have you had any issues with griefing? And um, for clarity, griefing is when people troll and deliberately kind of try and um, <laughs> uh, try and, in some quite devious and uncomfortable ways, try and infect the environment by sitting on top of the characters. You know, no. kind of, you know, no. <laughs> kind of, but also kind of not because I think. Um, a platform like this is just like lovely and kind-hearted that it's almost like disarming <laughs> people who want to troll to be like, oh, <laughs> uh, this is not the, the type of platform to do this. And um, because you essentially, um, like when you go to one of these, you would need actually the, the URL um, to go to the, the, the specific like venue or event or persistence space that it's happening. Um, that kind of aids in the protection, but also once you're in a space, because you can, you have these one-on-one -on -one conversations with people, people seem to just act very civilized and great. So um, I'd say for the few bad apples that I've experienced, they are um, greatly outnumbered by just the, um, how, like the amazingness of how people um, present themselves on this because I guess yeah it's it's kind of like you know you go you go to church and everybody's like all right hold on or you go into kind of um, uh, like a community space and yeah 
you have um, kind of a sense of responsibility. I'm like, all right. <laughs> Can I share um, the silly, the, the one funny time with us? Oh, um, sure. <laughs> that was, that was. <laughs> that was quite funny. So <laughs> I, um, I was doing a tour of a theatre around the space, the theatre that are kind of looking at doing, doing a series of lives with us. And um and there was a poo. <laughs> it was like an emoji poo in one in one spot. And it was actually it turned out that it was it was like um it was a hidden bar. So you click on you click on yeah. oh, we forgot to show you the clickable. So there's certain things that you can click on and they might transport you somewhere or they might pop up with information. And this clickable took you to a, a hidden bar and the sandcastle bar. And yeah, there was a poo in the sandcastle. Oh yeah, bar. and then I <laughs> and then I remember that I was um teaching a person how to use um this platform and um i was like oh we should do it was it was the july 4th festivities in um in the u.s and i was like oh i'm you know helping create kind of a space uh, because i was reusing another one of my venues for that <laughs> and um I was, and a person was like begging me like hey can i help can i help I was like sure help plant a few trees and then before I was like oh I made in a small present <laughs> I didn't find it but Ella did <laughs> oh, that's great um, we've just, just been able, uh, thanks to thanks to YouTube chat found out that the pantomime was in fact streaming beauty that's what it was called thank, thank you. you yeah that was, that was a great, great show, show. <laughs> we have a talk on the 10th of December by one of the makers of streaming beauty Stephanie Capson here oh, in the oh. studio which will be live in the building and I want to say a massive thank you to you both uh, for showing us around the world, uh, for joining us from two different other worlds at the same time. Um, <laughs> and a big thank you to our interpreter. Thank, thank, so thank you so much to the Studio. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. All of the participants. Thank you. Quick round of applause. Yeah, yeah thank you. So before you leave us, either online or in the building, next week's talk is by Tiny Giant, um, ever willing to explore strange new realms, creative technologists Derek and Nort have spent the last few months exploring the NFT art scene to understand the ways artists old and new are using them as expressions of creativity. Derek and Nort will be joining us live in the building. Um, and today is also Open Studio Friday, so this is the soft relaunch of our Open Studio Friday offering, which means if you want to, you are welcome to stick around. Hello. The background music. Walking around the world behind us. Oh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so, if you want to stick around and say you're welcome to Hot Desk in the afternoon, to 5 o'clock, and say hello to us, chat to residents, that's every Friday now, and, and there is a video event on the first Friday on uh, December the 3rd. It's another opportunity to come and network after, after work, have a drink, and see some new work. Thank you all for being here today online or in the building. We'll see you all same time, same place next week.